Hello everybody. Hello everybody. Uh, welcome to this presentation. Uh, welcome to this presentation about, uh, about uh, have your own website, website before hackers do it. Uh, I'm I'm a hacker. Uh, I'm uh, I'm a hacker. Not a cracker. Uh, I'm not a cracker. Um, that means. The hacking um, I use here. The hacking I use here is not, here. Real, it's not uh, the real hacking. I mean, ha uh, hacking. It should, uh, be, it should uh, be correct your own website because hacking, because hacking, is, because hacking is something. Anyway, else. everybody calls. Anyway, hacking everybody calls hacking, hacking, so therefore it's hacking. My name is Peter Martin. My name is I'm Peter Martin. Martin. I'm from the Hamagen Netherlands. I'm, I'm, from from Netherlands. I'm a Jumla volunteer. And besides and Jumla, besides I also, Jumla, I also organize, organize in my hometown open coffee in Nijmegen, which is for businesses. They meet up once a month. And I really like I really Jumla like and uh, Jumla and the user and groups, me and it inspired me to set up my own Linux user group in my hometown because, because, there, was no hometown because there was not anything. And it's running for five and a half years now, which is great. Um, this is my office. Uh, it's uh, in a really central place in uh, Nijmegen, uh, but my office is at the at the back end of this, so I don't see the, this nice view, which is good uh, for work. So. Um, I uh, have my own company, DB8, and I create uh, websites and extensions for customers. And last year I released something called Options Manager, which is a commercial uh, component to export the options of all your components, to import them in other websites. So no more clicking like, I don't want to see the author, uh, the date, etc. You just import it from another site which, which is already configured. Uh, besides my company, DB8, I am interested in the GDPR, the data, General Data Protection Regulation. And very recently, I started a startup with uh, Sigrid Kamlinger, which is called data2.eu. And with it, we um, try to make it easier for small businesses to create a processing index, which is one of the things you have to do uh, to comply with the GDPR. So let's start with the presentation. Um, before I really start, I have to put up a disclaimer first. So, sort of a privacy declaration kind of thing. So, first of all, uh, please try this at home. I mean, uh, it could be useful to test websites uh, if hackers cannot get into it. If you can't get uh, into it with all the tools, then hackers probably can't. Um, but only do it with permission. So, on your own website, don't try my website. Uh, do it only on your own website with permission. And if you do it on your live website, Maybe you ask your hosting company first. You should have followed. Yeah. So uh, I use a bit of command line code. Actually, a lot of command line code. I hope it doesn't scare you. And <laughs> after this presentation, you should not be too paranoid. I mean, it's just like um, I just give you some information. Uh, it's already happening, but now you know what's happening. And finally, and no websites have been harmed for this presentation, only <laughs> test websites. So, um, this is an overview of my presentation. First, I will uh, tell something about hack attacks, then how to hack your own server, then hack your own site, and then how to set up a, a good practice area for your own stuff. And finally, hacking scripts. And I hope that I have time to do some demos. So, hack attacks. Um, when I started with Joomla, uh, and I looked in the access log file, I saw all those four or four errors. And in the modern Joomla, uh, you have the redirect manager, and you can see all these kinds of wrong links. I don't have a, a WP includes in my website. It's from WordPress, because uh, scanners try to, to find uh, WordPress uh, websites uh, to hack. So uh, this is the access log of a, a website where you can also see something and it says uh, 404, so the result is bad. So who is attacking your site? Well, first of all, uh, your site is not that interesting. I mean, it's not about your site, it's about the CPU of the server you are using, because if they ha hack your site, they don't do anything with your site, they just want to use the server capacity. It's not real people. I mean, real people uh, start the scripts, uh, it's also not a uh, robot, but it's, I already said it, it's scripts, hacking scripts. Um, there are also real people hacking, but they are really targeted hacking, like they try to, to uh, rob a bank or I don't know what, uh, certain websites. But most of the hacks is done by automatic scripts. So what happens and how is your uh, site attacked? 
Well, first of all, uh, the script will visit a lot of different IP addresses. And then it will try to fingerprint it. So it does a lot of things to know what system you are running, what website system you are running, etc. And then if it knows that's this kind of information, uh, it will uh, check known vulnerability, vulnerabilities. If it finds any, uh, it will try to SQL injection or a script upload or uh, cross-site scripting stuff. And finally, if it's uh, successful, they own your website and they can use your website to target other websites or other stuff. So, how to hack your own website? I already told you, uh, don't really do it like hacking because if you run scripts on your own website, if it's, if it's a success, the script, then you have a problem and uh, maybe your website goes down. Or if you have a good IP, I mean uh, uh, internet provider, they might block you. So you can't get to your own website. In case you, this happens uh, and you use a VPN, just start your VPN using another uh, IP address and then you can try to do things again. So I would recommend to do penetration uh, testing only on, on, only on a copy of your site. Um, but there is a, a problem. Uh, if you do it on your uh, local site, you don't have anything of the server itself. You are only testing uh, the application, so in this case Joomla. So there are a couple of things you can also do on the site, <coughs> uh, on the live site. Uh, first of all, um, you can find information about the server. So if you, you're using Google Chrome or Firefox, just install uh, the web developer toolbar. And you can also look at the HTML source, but the web developer toolbar will also give you the HTTP header headers. So in this case, uh, Linux Nijmegen.nl, uh, it says uh, server is engine X 1.10.3. So my, we might better uh, uh, warn these fellows of Linux Nijmegen that they should reconfigure their server not to display uh, this version information. Because this is all this kinds of information is used when they target your uh, site. So uh, this one is better. There is no server information about which version of Apache, but it still says Apache. So the second thing you can do, um, if you have a browser, your browser does something on another server, it, it requests a page. Uh, but you can also do it uh, on the command line and then you get more information than just the website. So a command is called cURL, it's a headless browser. Uh, there has have been a, a presentation about headless browser, uh, I think it was yesterday or earlier. But it, this is really fine. Um, for instance, if I go to one of my sites with a cURL option V, I get all this kind of information. So it's, it gives information about the certificate, and then it continues uh, and it also gives information about the server again. So we have to ask this fellow, run this fellow also. And also, um, oh, and then here it star starts with uh, the, the page itself. So this is just information to get uh, information from the server, or some tools, and this is not uh, attacking it. I mean, the browser does the same thing. So uh, there's also something called SSL scan, and you can use that to uh, scan SSL certificates or a TLS, like it's commonly known these days. So if you do like SSL scan TLS 10 on this website, you get all this information like which uh, certificates are used, but also if uh, the heart bleed bug, which is really awful, if it has been um, patched on this site, it has been fortunately. So this is the kind of information you get. So, um, if you want to hack your own website, um, what I recommend is to start your own uh, LAMP stack uh, with a copy. So, uh, the LAMP stack, um, but you can also use a virtual environment. So, in my case, my machine over here is using a LAMP stack. I use Linux. I use, uh, on this case, Apache. Uh, I use MariaDB as a database server. I have PHP 7 and uh, I installed Joomla on it. But if I want to test old websites that don't run on PHP 7, I want to switch to 5.6 and I, I want to be really flexible with a configuration and this is not really flexible. So um, if you have a virtual environment, um, for instance VirtualBox, you can just install everything you want, every version of uh, PHP, etc. 
So you have your uh, hardware on it. You have um, the operating system. In my case, this is not Windows, but Linux. And then you have uh, your virtual box. And on top of the virtual box, you will have all kinds of containers running an operating system and you can install websites in it. So what I go, I'm going to do later on in this presentation, I will use one box for uh, installing the Joomla website. And in the other, I will uh, use to run Kali Linux, which is a, a Linux distribution uh, to do penetration testing. So um, there is a disadvantage of using this because in every container you have an operating system. So it takes a lot of uh, hard drive stuff. So if you want to install Linux or something else, uh, you have to download an ISO file, which is, can be long, installation can be long. And yeah, there are better ways to do. So I would like to introduce my practice area. So first of all, I'm using VirtualBox. And on top of that, I'm using Vagrant. Vagrant is a, a box manager, which allows me to do everything on the command line instead of using the GUI. And then I use Ansible. Who's using Ansible here? No one? Ah. And I have to do some work because this is really nice. It's, you can use it to deploy scripts on a server. Um, actually, uh, I, I have a box called DB8 Joomla box, which is uh, PHP 5.6, so for old, old versions. And you can uh, download it here on this uh, uh, GitHub URL and then just uh, install uh, such a system on your own box. So, oh. I will tweet about it probably. So, um, VirtualBox. When you install VirtualBox, you might run into problems. At least I do. First of all, oh, first of all, uh, VirtualBox itself. Um, I downloaded it from uh, uh, the, I think it's Sun. No, it's Oracle these days. Um, and then I installed it. I created my own uh, virtual environment, installed Linux, installed everything I wanted, like a web server, database, and PHP. And then uh, the second environment for the hacker script. And the first error I encountered when I run um, virtual VirtualBox was this. Um, make sure if you are going to use VirtualBox that uh, in the BIOS of your system you switch on a uh, hypervisor that, it's, that is using the, the one of the processor. Uh, otherwise you yeah, get these kind of errors. So I installed Vagrant. And with Vagrant, there are two things which are really nice. The first thing is you can do everything on the command line, and I think that's nice. Um, and the second thing is you can install boxes, ready-made boxes. So I use Debian Linux, and installing it might take 20 minutes, but there is already a ready-made box on the internet. Uh, it's called a Vagrant box, and I can just uh, deploy it from the, from, uh, from the internet. And if you have a fast connection, then maybe three, four minutes or so, and you have your live site. So when you start Vagrant, uh, you have a configuration file. You do Vagrant in it. It will create a file. And in the file, it will say Debian uh, Jesse 64, uh, in my case, uh, to install Debian 8. And I have a private network, and I come back to that later, which is uh, this IP address. And I had a couple of problems. You have to make sure that your uh, Vagrant and your VirtualBox are proper new releases. Because uh, yeah, sometimes um, it doesn't work with older versions. The second thing I ran into was the IP address. Um, I thought I have an IP address like uh, 192.168.05 for my machine. So um, I was thinking I might uh, create a VirtualBox with an IP address in the same range. That way I can really easily uh, connect to it. But apparently uh, you can get ne network cl clashes. So you better go uh, to VirtualBox in File, uh, Host Network Manager. Look for uh, the IP range it has. In this case it says 33.1. So I knew I should use some, some IP address in the 33 range. And even if my uh, computer is in another network, Using VirtualBox, you can access all these kinds of IP addresses locally. 
So I go to my browser, I add this in uh, the URL, and I can look to my local Joomla web website. Another thing is uh, guest additions. If you run into this problem, you, you should install it first and then start. So uh, Ansible. Ansible is really great. Ansible is a sort of um, cook. It will cook uh, a sort of recipe uh, where you define your hosts, where you define roles. Like um, I would like to have a website. Uh, so I, one role is web server. Another role will be a database server. And a web server needs other software than a, a database server. So you can define all those roles. And you can define templates that will be used. Templates like uh, I would like Nginx with this configuration or whatever. This is uh, to deploy it, but I do it uh, automatically. This used to be my vagrant file. So if I do vagrant up, it will just start my vagrant box. And just by adding a couple of lines of code, it will start Ansible and Ansible will automatically deploy my whole server, installing, well, everything I have in my site.yml, uh, my YAML file. Because in this YAML file, I define all the, uh, the things I want to install. So uh, again, for Hannes, <laughs> this is the URL and I will tweet about it later on. So now the hacking scripts. Um, there are a lot of hacking scripts available. Um, the first thing is not a real hacker script, it's just a network tool and it's called nmap. And with nmap, you can um, map your all uh, uh, server and also the network. So you can find all the uh, machines in your local area. So, I mean, uh, I'm um, in a certain IP range and I, you can find everything in the IP range including all the ports that are open and if you look to the ports that are open for instance um, if I install uh, my local machine on uh, under IP 100 and I do nmap on it I can see uh, these ports are open um, in case you will do this on a live server you might find other things and they might have some sort of cPanel or other, other uh, stuff that is accessible using a port so that's what hackers use to find out uh, what, what, what um, server admin tools uh, people are using and they try to, to hack it then. <coughs> uh, Nikto is a nice tool and it's cancelled for known vulnerabilities. Um, the name Klaatu Barada Nikto is from a movie and uh, just the last part. If you use Nikto, you will do something like this. Uh, Nikto, uh, the host, and then the IP address of the host, and then it will start to do a, whole, a lot of different things. So it will try all kinds of stuff, and if it works, if, if there is a directory index found, so you're able to browse the whole site, then it will have um, open source vulnerability database and a number, so you can look up the numbers and you can look what the real problem is. And the real numbers, OSVDB, are like describing the problem, but there are also hacker sites where you can find how to crack those problems. So uh, with combination, you can try a lot of things. Um, this is something that m also might give you a lot of uh, errors on your website because it scans for all uh, kinds of directories. For instance, if I do DRB on my uh, local system, it will, uh, it has 46,012 words that it's gonna use behind the URL to look if the directory exists. So it looks for, it, it sees that there is something called phpMyAdmin in my local machine, and then it finds everything, all the, the directories that it has. And this is used for fingerprinting and this generates a lot of false, um, I mean 404 errors. Then WP scan. I'm not going to use this because I use Joomla, but hackers use this probably, and this will uh, create all the WP login things in your Joomla site. So what I'm going to use is Joomla scan instead. Uh, sorry, Joom scan, and it has uh, all kinds of vulnerabilities that it's going to test on your Joomla site. Is that still working? Sorry. Is this uh, product still working? I think so. 
I will show it in uh, five minutes, maybe. So uh, you can download it here. And by the way, I will make this uh, slides available and all the, green, uh, the, the blue, blue things are clickable, the blue words. So this is what happens if you do uh, uh, Joom scan, and I have to tell you, Joom scan is a Perl script, so you have to install Perl on your machine, or maybe use Kali Linux and then use it because there is Perl installed already. So it's going to process my local machine again, and in this case, it finds uh, again some exploits, like it's Joomla 3.2.1, because I like this, this kind of numbers, so therefore I installed this version, <laughs> it's an old version. And yeah, I know I should update, uh, but in this case, it's just for educational purposes. So there's a uh, Joomla core remote uh, uh, privilege escalation vulnerability. It's described here how uh, people misuse it. And all these kinds of errors. So I hope uh, this presentation is not only about uh, uh, what hackers do, but also keep your websites up to date. But I'm sure I don't have to tell it here. I hope. <laughs> So, uh, oh yeah, it finds an administrator page, and then it, it also uh, sees that the Joomla registration is still enabled, so people can try to, to register themselves. So, um, all the scripts I just showed you are just single purpose scripts. And this tool called Metasploit is one tool with all kinds of different um, add-ons. And the add-ons are specifically to, uh, to, to, to crack certain sites. For instance, um, you have uh, Bruce Force login plugins. Uh, you have uh, scans for directories. So I, I showed you DRB. Uh, this is for directories, but you can also use Metasploit for that. So um, the first thing, how to scan a Joomla website. I mean, I already know that my Joomla website is 3.2.1. But if I uh, use Metasploit, I... I have to do a couple of commands like use, and then I have to, um, uh, how do you say, configure it to use the Joomla version uh, add on. Then I have to uh, configure the host it should target, and then run, and it will show me that uh, my Joomla version, oh yeah, this is what I, what I did, and when I did run, this is what I got Joomla version 3.2.21 on uh, my Apache Debian. So this information it gives me back which is really useful if you want to know the, the site. However, it can be done easier. Anybody? How can you know uh, the website, the, the Joomla version someone is using? Usually Except it's Hannes. in the meta generator yeah. uh, by default, and you have to switch the meta generator off. The uh, meta generator? Oh, sorry, yes. You mean... Uh, generator uh, tag. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm, yes. Uh, but if you switch it off, I can still know what site you are running. I'm sure you can, but that's the main one. No. No? Okay. Honest, please. I, I it was. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if you go into Administrator, Manifest, Files, Joomla XML, uh, you get the complete, um, yeah, the complete uh, manifest file of the yeah. Joomla installation with yeah. a version number and yeah. whatnot. So. Thank you. So, yeah, I was really surprised. I mean, when I was, um, I think it was last year, I was trying all these tools and I was looking in, how do they know it? So uh, I used those scanners. I looked at the server access log and then I saw uh, some sort of things that got success. So uh, I, it got information and I looked at it and I noticed this URL. And when I added this URL to my own website, it just, you could say, see the um, XML file that has all the installation information in it. So, um, something else you should do when you get home. Um, maybe you should uh, think about uh, disabling the XML files using HD access. However, if you have um, components on your website for download and you use the Joomla update service, um, if you switch off the XML, people can't reach your site anymore with their uh, update scripts. So you have to be careful with it. And there are possibility to block uh, a reading of this using a taxes file. Yeah. They, they, they look for this file, yeah. yes. So, um, besides XML, there's something else that, that hackers 
can use to fingerprint it. Joomla uses X SQL files to do updates. And if you do an update, then you have some certain X uh, SQL files in a certain directory. So they can look for all these kinds of different files. And then with the combination of things, they also can uh, find uh, which website you are using, uh, web uh, Joomla version you're using. So yeah, the second thing, um, scanning for plugins. So if you use Metasploit again, uh, and you do something like use Auxility Scanner uh, Joomla plugins, um, you will get something like this. <coughs> it will check all kinds of stuff and it will find things like, okay, uh, this, these are just the um, Joomla core modules and these ones were not installed and yeah, uh, it, it didn't give any uh, things. Something else, brute force, um, who's still using admin as login? <laughs> well, I am for this demonstration. <laughs> so, <coughs> if you do, if you use this, it will show all <coughs> kinds of uh, things it tries to hack. And I have to tell you, uh, I always thought they were just targeting your uh, administrator backend with admin, etc. But they are also trying to use the login form at the front end, and they are uh, searching for your login cookies to exploit. So, uh, yeah. That's it. So Kali Linux is a really great tool to have all these kinds of tools in a distribution. And you can install a virtual machine, a Kali Linux in it, and then you can use that box to attack your own other box that you set up using LAMP stack or maybe deviate a Joomla box. So uh, are there any questions so far? Yes, please, Johan. Yeah, but you're probably saying that you should remove version numbers, but that's just secured by obstruction and not. Yeah. Because I tried to make my Apache look like Playbox or whatever. Yeah. I mean, it's not really security by. Um, yeah, yeah, you're right. It's security by obscurity, but also. Um, and, and, and I mean, if I have a house, in my house, I can. Uh, I can say, okay, there is a window there, as the window there, you can use it or something like that, or I just don't say anything about the windows. Um, it's, I, I think it's better to just not use it and not display it. Don't, don't give them more information they need. But yeah, it's a bit of uh, yeah, obscurity, of course, yeah. So uh, the demo. So I have uh, VirtualBox. This is the graphical uh, tool of VirtualBox. I have one box with Kali Linux. And the other box is using um, my DB8 Joomla box that I deployed on the command line. But what you see here is the graphical interface. But if I go to the command line again, this is the, the folder of Joomla box. And what you can see here are a couple of files, like I have a folder called Ansible, and I have a file uh, called Vagrant file. And the Vagrant file gives information about the IP address of my box, the version of my uh, operating system, and also at the end, um, I'm starting Ansible. And um, let I can show you Ansible. So I have my chop, 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 chop. So this is my Ansible, uh, my, my folder. And if I go to Ansible, then you have um, uh, a configuration for Apache. And one of the things it says like, okay, uh, Apache needs to be restarted after the process. But the other thing is the task. Okay, if uh, Apache, um, if it's not there, it should install Apache too. And it should also enable not rewrite, which I need for nice URLs. So I will now show you my, um, pro my, my really great Joomla website. Mm -hmm. This is my Joomla website in, uh, on this website. 
Uh, this is the back end of the website and I have to log in. Um, I am not yet using uh, admin, but I will soon because I will create a new user. So in the user manager, admin, it's not admin admin by the way, I use something else, <laughs> <laughs> but also really, only one to before. <laughs> yeah. Stop, stop, stop. So I have to uh, assign this user, of course, to uh, the super users. Save. So the first thing you can notice is that the last visit day is never. So nobody ever logged in into this website yet. So um, what shall I do first? Um, oh. So I have this Joomla box, but I... No, no, before I do that, like, let's do something else first. I have Joomscan. So Joomscan is the uh, Perl script. It's called Joomscan, and we do like I have to, to look uh, for the um, Perl, and then Joomscan dot Perl, and then U, probably of uh, U. Uh, HTTP so uh, this is my local box if you can you can see it here the, uh, 3300 and now I will start uh, zoom scan and oh, it's too fast sorry so now I start zoom scan and you can see it detects Joomla 3.2.1 which is okay and then it shows all things I just showed in my presentation and this is a lot. So uh, yeah, should the update. Um, I will show Kali Linux. Uh, sorry? I was about to say root. Root, yes. And what's the password? No, 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 no. Sorry? One, two, three, four. No. Empty. Empty. No, no, no. Drop the policy and make it. No, tour. Um. By default, you have to do the uh, user login uh, like T O O R. Yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> it's, it's, it's by default the Kali Linux password, but Kali Linux should not be just your working distribution. You should only use it when you want to do penetration tests. So uh, this is a graphical tool, but in the graphical tool, uh, oh yeah, I have um, my terminal. And in my terminal, I do IPA. So you can see this one is running on. Oh, okay. This is running on another board. Doesn't matter. Um, I thought it was also in a 193, but uh, 92. But anyway, made exploit. The first thing it starts to do is it looks for the database because made exploit has a really large database database of uh, exploits. So it's meta exploits. And if it's uh, configured with all the, the new things, um, it was has uh, 1,722 1, uh, exploits. So what I go I'm going to do now is I have to do something with Joomla. So I will do use and auxiliary, um, the scanner, um, the HTTP, and then it's Joomla. And there are multiple Joomla things. In this case, I do the plugins. Um, now it's using this these uh, uh, add-ons, and now I have to specify um, the host. Um, so this is my local IP again. Again, and if I do run, it will uh, yeah look for all the stuff on my local system. And, um, oh, I forgot to show you something. I go back to my site, to the back end, components, uh, redirects. It already I just created a couple of, a really lot of, you know what? Um, I will remove them all. 
it's already ready. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. This, uh, yeah. Oh. Trash. Some tea. So I have to remove the trash also. So now um, there's nothing else. There are no wrong links, uh, into, um, no, no redirects here. So um, let's first try if it works. <coughs> anyway, it doesn't work. Oh. wrong no never mind I was trying to fake a URL but ah. <laughs> hello hep okay this is obviously wrong but now now it has uh, you see it here so if I do the uh, vulnerability scan again and I go back to my Joomla site you will see it creates all those things you see in the back end. Um, so, uh, yeah. Now I'm going to go to my users. Is that then an indication of someone scanning your site? Yeah, could be. Uh, or a skipped. So, so, so yeah. I, actually, <laughs> you have to be careful because if, if you have that on too long, you can just collect so much data that your set breaks. So here you can see we still had the uh, administrator of this website uh, still not logging into this website. But if we go to uh, Kali with Metasploit again and I do um, use Joomla boot first login um, and then I have to set the host again. So again, let's go back never used login so here so um, now I'm, go I'm gonna run the Kali again the Metasploit and I was trying all these kinds of combinations let's go back to Joomla okay we already have a new user logged in um, 43 yeah it's now 1043 so um, yeah never use admin because it's really obvious and also use long passwords and I, remain, I recommend to use some password manager with uh, gener generated passwords or something like that. Um, so this is I think basically it. Oh it's still trying other things. Uh, you can stop now. And yeah there are a lot of tools uh, in this Metasploit that you can, uh, can use to, uh, to look at your website. Are there any questions? How many, um, I, I mean, how many uh, dictionary names will it try before it stops? <coughs> how big is its dictionary? Depends. You, you can load it a different dictionary, so depends. Ah, I see. I can't find it here, but um, in this case, it's it says it's brute force. Mm. But it's not really brute force. No, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Brute force is what one, you do two, three, after the dictionary One, two, three, files. four, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. 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 But yeah, you can see here, username, admin, password, one, two, three. Yeah, this is really obvious. Or sitecom. I don't know why they use sitecom. Probably because of the modems. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I wonder, you know, <coughs> would they ever get to whatever it is I actually use? Um, how many uh, numbers do you have? Um, on my no, 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 don't say it. <laughs> um, I, I can say it. So, uh, we have a policy to have between 28 and 30 characters. Okay. For the password, not for the login. Uh, login is normally about 16 characters, but Six. random. Okay. Hmm. Oh, but random login name, that's a good idea. <laughs> and even, even after 12, if you try to, um, if you get the hash and try to go backwards and see the password, that will take you about a year. Actually, um, there is something called uh, XCD. Uh, 
password. Uh, what was the name? Um, horse. I saw also on some we got on the web server also something if there uh, mm. uh, um, I think think five uh, consecutive logins that are going wrong with you or ID will be just on the band table. You know that the author of this comic has admitted that this is not true. Uh, There's a lot of problems with this thing. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that's 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 true, but um, this I think this is true. But you should not do this. Uh, you should not do this. But you should do something else. And I always recommend to use a, a password manager that generates random passwords. But I have a, have a lot of problems with it because some sites say uh, you cannot use or only you can use maybe twenty or fifteen uh, in length. And I use 25, and then it has problems. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, some sites are not really uh, are ready for long passwords. But yeah. yeah. Well, I, I use a system of seeding. So I have um, uh, I have a memorized random strong password. Yeah. And then I seed it with a specific seed, which I won't tell yeah. you how I get that seed per site. That I, that's easily to memorize for the site. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, and it's somewhere in there. I won't tell you how many characters are yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so okay. that way it's much harder. I'm not yeah, saying yeah, yeah, No, no, and, and you just wanted to be careful uh, for, for some things. Mm, yeah, there are some passwords that are, so, so I had for my yeah, Mac for the hard drive, uh, uh, hard drive encryption. Um, I used some characters that are native to the German language. And the problem is, um, I had to restore it, and I could not get the password. And I was very, very close, and I was so sure that I would get it in. problem was, at that mode, that was a US keyboard and not a German keyboard anymore, and it was not documented. So that may be some things just be, yeah. Um, I would like to answer a question. Um, someone uh, asked the question, uh, um, is it possible to delete the Joomla.xml file so hackers can attack it? Mm. Yes, certainly. Yeah, you can, you can remove it. But that disables upgrading. Yeah, you can upgrade your site anymore. You have a problem with that, uh, but you can remove it. But I, I recommend, use it, don't remove it, because yeah, otherwise you don't, you can't. What about if you make it, um, uh, uh, non-readable yeah. until no. you do an upgrade and then you set it no. as a, No, no. Uh, if, if you use some external tools, yeah. uh, you want to be informed by the external tools if there is an update and your website is not up to date. Um, and if, it's, if you have to sw switch it on yourself, yeah. uh, then you don't use these tools. And yeah. So don't, don't remove the XML file, but just uh, use uh, HD access if you have Apache yeah. to make it unreadable from the outside. And if you have sites of, uh, if you use the update server for your own files to distribute them, then you have to take care to exclude those. Yeah. In this particular case, it makes more sense to just hide the entire administrative record from certain places. Oh, which yes. actually already. Specifically on extension. That's a very good point, because uh, at the Joomla Day Holland, I was doing this presentation and I had problems. And I tried to um, do use the, the Metasploit on one of my live sites, this is a demo site, and it didn't work. The administrator password was not changed. Uh, I was using admin exile for that, so I had to use a token behind the URL, so therefore it could not reach it. Yeah, uh, good point. Why are you using admin exile when you can be using jhackguard, which does the same job? Sorry, what? J, J what? Jhackguard. Okay, I didn't know that it's one. Dutch. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you for the recommendation. It does, well, it does the same job, but much, much, much more. It's okay. It's a very, very good uh, security software. There are more. Uh, you have Akiba, yeah, Akiba admin tools. You can also use it for uh, protecting the URL. I, I also use Akiba, but not for that purpose. Of yeah, J yeah. Hat card. J has IP restrictions and all kinds of things built in. Okay. It's a good one. Uh, That's Yeah. Hannes? There, there, um, Still fingerprint. 
print um, a journal website pretty easily. So um, it would be best to really block all XML files. Yeah. Um, in defenders, not just by XML files. Yes, of course. People but will find it out. It goes back to security by obscuring it. If you want to, it's a good first step. Yeah. Of course, it's just more, more hurdles. Yeah, it's, it's indeed. It's a little bit more difficult. Yeah. It's, it's good to, to, to um, add more thresholds to, to, to make it more difficult to hack. Yeah. The adding hurdles when people are using scripts to do it doesn't really mean anything because it's automated. So they don't care if it's 10 or 100 or 1,000 steps because it takes a second. Um, actually, but still, there, there, there are um, lots of uh, scripts out there that um, do the bare minimum. Mm -hmm. And so. Um, let, let's let's rephrase it because uh, of the people uh, seeing the movie later on the clip. I, I don't I'm not no I'm not, not sure if you, uh, they can hear you. So um, uh, the question or or the command was the command was to to add more uh, uh, hur hurdles to make it more difficult. And then uh, someone else said, yeah, but they use automated scripts. So uh, the hurdles, if you add more, then uh, yeah, they just check everything. That's true. Um, one of the things I also recommend is using something like uh, fail to ban on the server level. Yep. Uh, fail to ban is something that analyzes your log files and you can describe bad behavior. And bad behavior is trying to do a lot of requests in a certain amount of time, especially if the request give all uh, 404 errors or 403 errors. Uh, so um, yeah, uh, you, it's, it's, um, you have to do a lot of things to, to protect your site. Yeah. 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 You can use filter ban for uh, multiple levels, not only login. I know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yes. Um, on the subject of checking passwords and root cause and everything, I think it's worth saying that everybody should update their admin tools. There's been um, a recent vulnerability um, in terms of what is logged. Um, Nick released a statement on the Kiva's site a couple of days ago. So update, but update okay. quick. <laughs> okay. So uh, the command for of Jess is uh, admin tools has some sort of vulnerability, uh, or the, for the previous version, uh, that has something to do with uh, login uh, uh, passwords. So uh, update admin tools if you use it, and then you're safe again. Yeah? Any other questions? Uh, yes? Does a background can be installed on uh, Windows uh, 10? Whew. My question came from there, that's between Windows <coughs> to 10, there is possibility to install Hyper-V, uh, yeah, I, I know. Of, uh, yeah. I know uh, that's possible. I, I'm really glad that uh, Windows now has the possibility to, to use Linux commands. Uh, it's called Hyper-V, you say? Yes. Okay. Um, but I'm glad that I don't know uh, Windows. Sorry. Anybody using Windows? Um, yes. Do you know if Vagrant is uh, possible on Windows as well? Okay. Yes. Yeah, it is. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I was. And Ansible. You can use Docker as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah but jo Docker is a bit problematic. I heard. Yeah. You can install mm -hmm. Bash on Windows as well, don't you? I'm sorry. You can install yeah. Bash on Windows. Yeah. Okay. So after that, I think you're ready to go. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, try it. Maybe you can try it with my Joomla box if it runs. Then uh, yeah. I know if it runs also on Linux. Yeah. Uh, sorry, with on Windows. What, what I'd like to know. Completely different question, but sorry, <laughs> new question. Um, if you go and look at, um, at the redirect list, yeah, is there are there things that you can tell immediately from it that are useful? O on the you know, what? By, by, by manual scan down that list yeah. of recent yeah. attempts. Yeah. Are there things that you can tell from that that are useful to? Uh, protect your site. I don't. I don't think so because you get so much information, and it's all uh, four or four errors. So mm. uh, it didn't work. So mm -hmm. it's great. The things that worked, you don't see in the redirect manager. 
what did work. I yeah. Know. Exactly. <laughs> That's why I ask, is there anything useful you yeah, can yeah, get yeah. from it? But maybe there is not. No. Okay. Okay. Regarding GDPR requirements, can we publish your your picture on Facebook? Uh, yeah. uh, the question is uh, uh, regarding uh, GDPR, uh, if it's possible to, to put my uh, uh, picture on Facebook, uh, yes. Um, actually, um, Cambridge Analytics, Analytica already has my picture. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I don't think this is really a problem anymore. I mean, it was not me. Uh, it was one of my Facebook friends that uh, run an application on the telephone uh, that scraped all their friends, including me. So uh, my pass, uh, no, my, my, my photo, my profile, my birth date. Um, oh yeah, Facebook. Uh, my birth date on Facebook is not real. <laughs> um, so uh, all these things have been scraped. Um, actually, I was thinking about writing a GDPR complaint letter for I would like to see all my uh, details. Uh, but it's already got bankrupt, uh, Cambridge Analytica. I mean, they foresaw all these uh, procedures and courts. How do you say? Uh, anyway, juridical pro uh, legal problems. So therefore, uh, they just yeah, declared themselves bankrupt. If they went bankrupt. You don't think that they passed it all on to another company? That's they did. They did. Yeah, they of did. Of course they did. Yeah. Yeah. Of course they did. Yeah, yeah. Books. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's okay, uh, I consent for putting my <laughs> thing on the Facebook. Yeah. Thank you. My picture. Okay, thank you all for your attention. Thank you.